Hello everyone and welcome back to The Doctor Will See You Now. Um, thank you for allowing a, a little break in transmission uh, last week uh, while certain things are, are being dealt with on the home front. But we're back in the consultation room and it gives me tremendous pleasure to welcome an author that I feel really remiss that I have not been in conversation with. Um, Kat Diamond, uh, publishing as Katerina Diamond. Welcome. Welcome to our discussion. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here. Um, Ple pleasure. To be here. Um, and, and as I've said to all the authors that I've been bringing on, you should have been coming to Newcastle Noir this year. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do it. If 2021 allows us respite um, from COVID, please would you come back because the plan is, or please would you come because the plan is that we just roll out the program as it, as it was down to be. And, and we'd just love to see you in Newcastle if that's possible. Yeah, absolutely would love to do it. Yeah, I was really looking forward to it actually. And it was only last minute, wasn't it, that it was cancelled. So it was really, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, were the, we were there right at the beginning and the decision to not do it was really hard. And now looking back with hindsight, yeah, you know, the yeah. wisest thing to do. So, yeah. So the information that I have read about say, you says that you burst, I love the way it says, you burst onto the crime scene with your debut, The Teacher, in 2016. Is that correct? Yeah. So four years writing, uh, writing crime fiction. Uh, it, your first novel became a Sunday Times bestseller and a number one Kindle bestseller. Long listed for the CWA John Creasy Debut Dagger Award. And also, and I found this really intriguing, the Hotel Chocolat Award for The Darkest Moment. So I wonder, without giving too much away, what is the darkest moment that you were nominated for in that book? Well, I'm going to... I'm not sure if they ever actually told me which moment, but I know exactly which moment it is, because yeah. I've got lots of angry letters from people saying I had to give up at 16% through the story because it was just too horrible. Um, but um, there's a lot of medieval things going on in the teacher, medieval revenge. And so uh, this particularly nasty technique of killing someone very, very slowly um, while they were conscious and <laughs> had a lot of time to think about what they'd done. Uh, that was probably the one that got me that nomination. Mm, it was mm, horrible. Mm. I didn't even like writing about it, but mm. it's... so it's making me think the Inquisition. I, I, and and when you were doing your research for that kind of thing, I mean, was it uncomfortable, or did you did you enjoy actually? Dis oh, enjoy the was was it intriguing to research that thing? I think it's interesting to see the depths at which people will go to, because these were, a lot of these were like sanctioned punishments that were used by the government against mm -hmm. people so, or the church. And so that is interesting. Uh, quite glad that we don't do those things anymore. Uh, definitely very interesting to research, quite uncomfortable to write at times but I still powered through <laughs> still did it. Yeah, yeah good good and 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 like I say I think the impact fabulous fabulous in starting that you started a series um and two protagonists in there two uh, detectives detective sergeant Imogen Gray and Adrian Miles um and I, I just wonder, because I really, what I want us to do today is, is look at your latest novel, The Heat Wave, published this year. But, but I think we really do need to talk about these two protagonists and the way you've developed them. And I, I just wondered, where did they come from? And how, over the series so far, how do you feel their relationship has developed? Um, I always like the duo aspect of police work um also i don't really enjoy reading about higher up ranks i think reading about the lower even though a ds is a, a decent rank mm. it, they get to do more work as in outside field work whereas 
anyone much higher than that would probably more likely be stuck in the station most of the time. So from that respect, I wanted them to get their hands a bit dirtier and, and go out, talk to people and mm -hmm. uncover things. So, so that's why I chose DSs. Um, but originally when I wrote The Teacher, um, it, it started off as a, a romance novel. Mm. Oh, um, and then I felt like it wasn't really working, and I needed to add a bit of murder, um, which I did. And then mm -hmm. I thought these murders are quite horrific. I'm pretty sure some police would get involved at some point, and that was when I created my police officers. And then I, I got quite attached to them, and and decided that they had more stories to come. And so yeah. It, it was quite organic in the beginning. I, I never deliberately went into crime. It just mm. found me. Yeah, I, I, I find that really intriguing that you, this, this set off as, as romance and became something much darker. And it didn't set off as a series. But, that, but do you think, I mean, again, moving on as, as, as the novels do, do you think it was these two protagonists that gave that momentum? For it to be a series, or, 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 were the, or was it the stories that, that you felt were coming out that lent itself to a series? How, how did that work? I felt it was the protagonist. So I really enjoy watching and reading series where I get invested in the police officers' lives more so than the actual crimes, um, because the crimes sort of come and go, don't they? So I wanted to create two police officers that I would want to read more about. And I wanted uh, a, a will they, won't they kind of thing. So the notion then of your protagonists moving the series on as opposed to the stories, but over the course of the novels in this series, I wonder where do you feel that they are now as people? How, how have they developed over time? Well, I don't want to say anything too spoilery but um everything ends with a massive cliffhanger at the end of the most recent one of the series which was woman in the water and things are going to be very different going forward um and they have changed dramatically particularly um the male police officer adrian miles uh went through something particularly horrific in the last book and so which was something i always wanted to explore um so from now on he is a completely different person and so the challenge will be how does imogen deal with that and 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 it changed it's changed the dynamics of their relationship and in fact his relationship with everyone from now on so mm -hmm. yeah I, I i was going to ask will there be more but from what you're saying there will be more which brings us just nicely for a moment though to where your writing's at so this year with the release of the heat wave and do us the honors of, of wafting the beautiful cover gorgeous beautiful thank you um Given the way the weather is at the minute and looking at that beautiful beach scene there on the front, um, oh, to be there. But then going back to the novel, maybe not to be on that beach. Um, why did you come to the point then of thinking, OK, I'll leave the series for now. I'm going to move to standalone. And was it an easy decision to make? Um, it was it, it was kind of an organic decision almost because where the series ended on the last book was quite major and I felt quite exhausted by it as well mm. because it was uh, it was quite a traumatic one to write anyway but it was also just I've written six in a row in very quick mm, indeed yeah and so I just felt like I needed to pull away and have a bit of percolating time in order to get going again um and so and also my publisher Avon Books wanted me to do the same and so we talked about it and they asked me if I thought I could write a standalone thing 
and so I, I came up with the an idea of the heat wave and and that was that although it was very different the original idea to to what then came mm. about but I, th that sounds like echoes from when you did the teacher that that set off as something became something else. So the same with the heat wave, you set off on a journey and it became something else. Yeah. 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 So when I, when I started writing the heat wave, in fact, when I handed in my first draft, it was purely from the one perspective and there was no second perspective, but we decided that it needed that extra layer of intrigue and we added in uh the we pushed the timeline into the past and then added in the present timeline mm. if that makes sense yeah yeah because that, that that split timeline that you present us with then in the novel is now and 16 years previously which i think is a really intriguing number to choose 16 i mean did you put a pin in in sort of like a timeline that were possible or did 16 because of people's ages maybe what why that it was an age thing i mm. i wanted to highlight the difference between a 16 year old person and a, and a woman basically mm. how how we evolve and change so much in that short space of time really 15 16 years is not that long and yet we can become such completely different people yeah. Uh, like if I remember back to me being a teenager, uh, I would literally kill my children if they did half the stuff that I did. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we grow up and we mature and, and things change and, and I wanted to put that across. But also uh, I, I felt it worked with, with the story as well because there's a lot about teenagers in it, even though it's not a teenage book. Mm -hmm. and, and if we can come then again to um, those two protagonists and the, or the past present being told between Felicity and Jasmine, yeah? Um, two young women who 16 years earlier are, are friends, although they're very different. Um, and I wondered, in depicting their lives Back then, was there anything that you were keen to bring out in the, you know, the, the, the difference between them as, as people? Well, the, the heat wave is actually set in the town where I spent my teenage years. Mm -hmm. And um, it's quite a, a strange place to be as a teenager because not a, heat, a whole lot of stuff to do. And so quite often you're just creating drama for the sake of it, just to have something to talk. <laughs> So you, you would sort of get yourself into situations where where maybe if you were more savvy and from a more sort of metropolitan or city type area, you wouldn't you wouldn't need that sort of drama. And so like I don't know. I, I really wanted to show that that teenagers can be um have a lot of agency as well, you know, it's mm, not yeah. just they're not just children being pulled along with their parents, you know. I don't know if I'm explaining myself very well. Yeah, no, I like, yeah, that they're not just sort of like add ons to a family entity, but that, that, that idea of that from, from a very yeah. early age, we, we think, we feel, we do, and not necessarily. When you start to become who you eventually become, you know. Yeah. I think when you, it's where you start to find yourself. Yeah, yeah. And into that story, 16 years earlier, comes uh, this outsider, Tim. Uh, uh, and again, not wishing to give away, but, you know, because people should be reading this novel very much. So what did Tim do for you? What was, what was his place within that narrative? Well, he was, he was like the crack in the glass almost. He was shining a light on... on things that she she didn't realize were wrong in her life you know so she was going along with things and then he came in and suddenly things were put out of place that she thought were more stronger than they were and so he sort of represents i don't know he's 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 just like the 
the the wrong thing in in the wrong place and and he jars everything else into that that he's the beginning of the end almost for her mm. i love the way you say he's the crack in the glass you know the things that when it starts to break and things like that so yeah thank you now the premise of it all is a missing girl that brings back memories of a missing girl sort of like history repeating itself um same place different times you initially didn't set off though with that split time frame so how are you allowed to say how you started it off i mean was it just one missing girl when it started off uh it was just uh it was originally just the past storyline and so mm -hmm. it was just the story of what happened that one summer um and a lot more happened in the first version of it but it felt a bit too sort of teenage drama a bit too uh -huh. yeah. and so we wanted to add in that adult voice to to bring it more uh into a relatable for for my demographic of readers which is women mm. you know in their 30s 40s Although personally, I struggle to think like a woman in her 30s, 40s. I'm incredibly immature. And so it was really hard to write <laughs> more adult storylines for me personally. I, I was going to say, I, I really identify with you. Um, I often, how, you know, how do people in my age group think? I'm not really sure about that. But, but evidently, what, what I think is, you know, the success of your writing and that, you know, as you talk about that demographic and, you know, you clearly have it, even if you don't feel that you have, I think. Um, that idea of right in the past, right in the present, the notion that history repeats itself uh, and also the aspect of keeping secrets. Um, you clearly write fiction but I just wonder in writing these things, do you feel that they do mirror in any way fact? I think uh, fiction is a great way to explore reality almost because um, for one, for me, if I read a story in a newspaper or whatever, I, I kind of get it. But when you read it in a fictional setting, you get the thoughts, the feelings in it kind of I think it makes you more empathic to understand certain things and how they happen and I think crime writing particularly shines a light on a lot of things that people go through and and how they might be feeling about those things you know and I think as well it's a good way to explore how I personally might feel about things not just if they happen to me, if they happen to people I care about, if um, just it's it's a great what if scenario. And mm. and if you can read newspaper articles that are far more exaggerated and fantastical than anything you would read in a crime book, you know, things don't always end up with a nice all tied up, you know, so yeah. we get yeah. Then, you know there's there's a lot of stories out there so i think it's a nice way to get resolution as well uh to to explore these things through fiction because it can be quite frustrating to be too steeped in the real world sometimes especially at the moment i feel i haven't watched the news in about four months <laughs> so yeah 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 I, I i really agree with you the idea of you know let let fiction take us to places that maybe real life or fact can just be too too close for comfort um, okay. and then add on that the layers of all that might be happening around those those real life stories um but but yeah i i just wondered when when you were writing though the notion of missing girls um as opposed to other aspects that that, that you've written um children going missing was that difficult for you to contemplate at all uh no <laughs> <laughs> no not at all 
no, I've definitely written harder things than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, those almost seem like the less real parts of the story, if you know what I mean. It's more about the the the, the little connections between people. Those are the harder bits because you've really got to dig deep and and find something that you might you know something real there if that makes sense yeah yeah it does did when, when you were doing this i because you've you've mentioned this before though that that your series had reached you know quite quite a difficult moment on its path and and it was right just to put that down for a little while and let things settle um but when you were going through the process of creating the heat wave did you miss you know the characters from your series did you want to bring them in but you couldn't i mean i didn't want to bring them into that world although i could because geographically it's set quite mm -hmm. close to there. yeah but um but i did miss it and i i found writing the heat wave was one of the most challenging things mm -hmm. to write um because i didn't have the safety net of what would a police officer do in this? You know, there's a procedure with police, so you yeah. can say this happens next, this happens next. You know, now they would go and interview someone. Now they would go and do this. Whereas, this is just a woman on her own trying to find something out. So she's, I've got to put her, myself in her position and think, how would I find those things out? Mm -hmm. And the answer is usually Google. So that wouldn't <laughs> have been a very exciting book. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, but I, lo I love the fact that, you know, letting go of procedural and letting go of professional ability, you know, and professional knowledge and, and putting that notion of a search and a search present and a search past into the hands of an every woman. Mm. You know, and I, I think that you know, it's really refreshing in a way. Um, and you mentioned again the what if and thinking of your readers there you know putting themselves in that position of what if what if that were my life what if i found myself in that situation um, yeah. and i think you know that the twists and turns that come in that you know the sitting in the seat that i sometimes wonder when it is a police procedural and if you're not a police officer well you know you are watching that happen from a yeah. distance and this certainly wasn't happening from a distance I, I did have a bit of a tricky question and i know we've discussed this this prior but the the, the notion of it being two young girls and, and how people talk about crime written on a female body and 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 have we you know have we moved beyond that um i mean has ever has anybody ever questioned in this novel that oh you know it's, it's young girls you know being victims well, um, I think the sad truth is that young girls often are victims and mm -hmm. I think it's important not to try and ignore that. But also I feel, um, for example, the teacher, almost every victim in that was a man um, and they died quite terrifically. So, uh, and I feel across the board, across all of my books, the body count is possibly weighted more towards men than women mm -hmm. and certainly there's a lot of um and i i try not to pander to stereotypes in that mm -hmm. way yeah um and also I, I feel there are some crimes against men that aren't explored enough and i've definitely done that in a, in a couple of my books i won't i won't say too much about that but um i just feel like crime is a good way to to explore all of those things. And, and I think if you write with empathy, whether you're writing about mm. a male victim or a female victim, that should not mean that you're adding to the stereotype of either one. So as long as you're doing the character, the victim, the investigation, whatever, as long as you're doing it justice mm. in the way that you portray it, mm. and it's not gratuitous, Although I have been accused of that because I do, I think if, um, I think if there is a violent attack, uh, often pretty much sexual attacks, particularly, I think it's important to go into a, not the details of it, but just the horror of it because it's horrible. And I think it's, but it's not good to just throw it away as, as something. 
yeah 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 not just yes yes it happened yeah yeah and and we won't go there we'll just we just need to know it happened and we won't go there but as you say there are there are things that do need to be stated maybe and and horribly you know I, i believe that because i don't think it should be I think it's supposed to make you think, not just entertain you. That's mm. my standpoint. Mm. I love, I love that, that you say that you're very equal ops when it comes to the, you know, the gender of the victim. I think, yeah, yeah. I mean, because... I try not to be misandrist as well because I tend to be a bit sometimes, you know. Um, so I think it's important to to kill men and women. <laughs> yes in, in in books of course yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but but again and i want to say this to anybody who hasn't you know had the had the, the good fortune to, to to delve into the pages of your novels the way that you do explore certain issues that maybe haven't been uh brought to the fore as they should be um you know i'm thinking regarding male victims of certain issues and 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 Thank you for doing that, because I, I think that, that, is, that is vital. Um, I wanted to ask as well about the heat wave. Um, a book born in, in COVID times, shall we say. How is, how is the, the notion of, of marketing, of getting the book out there to people, how have you found that? Uh, it's actually gone really well mm-hmm. uh i think we have kind of a captive audience because mm-hmm. <laughs> everyone's at home yeah i'm looking for things to do uh i think people are picking up books at the moment uh i think crime is an, an easy read even though you know i don't mean that in a derogatory way yeah yeah i mean it, it, it's it's comforting it's a you know you know you're going to get questions and answers and it's it's exciting um so i, I think all in all it, it's better than I expected it to be. I know lots of people have had their publication dates moved to next yes. year. Yeah. I, I'm so pleased that I did not do that because I would have been pulling my hair out. So mm. overall, I, I've been really happy and I've had some amazing reviews and responses to it. So I can't complain. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I am glad, I'm glad it came out when it came out. And, and I agree with you about that idea of we have, we have, if we're fortunate enough to have had time to sit and read. Um, and I think, you know, it's certainly been a book I've enjoyed during during lockdown times. Um, I wonder though, um, without wishing to put too much pressure on, because always ever for an author, there's the notion of the next book, because of course this was written long before and life has moved on. Yeah. Are you back with the series or are you on another standalone? Well, I'm supposed to be writing another standalone. Mm-hmm. I am writing another standalone. Mm-hmm. Most of my publishers are watching. <laughs> I'm writing it. Um, I'm close to finishing that. But I, I had a real uh, creative block at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. I could not do anything. I was quite useless. Mm-hmm. I watched a lot of television. It was great. So I thought, how can I get my writing mojo back? And so I just, about seven or eight weeks ago, I picked up a notebook and I started plotting my next police procedural book, which I finished writing about two weeks ago. Wow. So yeah. I, I just wrote like a maniac and mm-hmm. that's it. I've written that. So now I'm back on my standalone, which I'm halfway through and trying to desperately finish it in three weeks time so i i take my hat off to you because i think you know yes there was a moment where there's the block but then you know the block goes you know and you're almost two books you know woo. i and but i think that reflects again you know your trajectory so far you know from the teacher coming out to now there's you know, those books have, you know, have come out beautifully. Because we've never met before, um, I, I, I'm, I, if you don't mind me asking, what, when did it suddenly come to you or was it a thing that built up over time that you have these stories in you? Well, when my son was born, he's 20 now, I, I hated daytime television. I could not 
do it, I don't have the right mindset for that particular form of entertainment. And so I felt I might start writing stories. And so I started writing screenplays and I did that for like 10 years. I was trying to break into the write movies and things like that. And then eventually my friend said, oh, there's a novel writing group in town. Do you want to go with me? And I was like, I can't write novels. They're, they're too hard. I can't do it. And then three months later, I started The Teacher. So, you know, it just goes to show that... I, Novel writing was never where I thought I'd end up. Yeah, yeah. Storytelling is definitely something that's always been a part of me. In fact, The Promise, my book, The Promise, which is the fourth in my series, is based on a screenplay that I wrote about 10 years ago. I kind of pulled it out, pulled yes. it out and made yeah. it into a police procedural. Mm. So I was quite pleased with that. And that, that, that to me speaks to the notion of that maybe nothing's ever wasted. No. You know, I, I know, I know, you know, a number of authors talk about maybe that first novel and they've locked it in a drawer and it's not going to see the light of day. But maybe right place, right time, some changes. I, mean, I hate throwing things away because I'm so lazy that I do not want to do it again. Yeah. So I would rather <laughs> pull it out and work on it until it's workable. So I'm really bad like that. I don't like deleting words. I, you know, I'm just mm. like, I'd rather add five sentences and make it work than have to chop five sentences. Is all, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's just me. Mm -hmm. Now, I need to ask you, because here we are in these times that we live in, but those two, you know, protagonists of yours in the series, okay, Imogen and Adrian, if we were to consider them at this point in time, who would you rather experience lockdown with who would who do you think of the two of them would better cope with the restrictions that we've experienced and even though those restrictions are maybe fewer at the moment which of those two would it be better to have to have gone through this with um i feel like maybe imogen would be better better able to cope with it um, but I think Adrian's probably a more pleasant person to hang around with. So, you know, he's just, you know, Annie can cook, whereas she can't. So, you know, yeah, so, but I think probably I would probably pick Imogen out of the two to hang out with. Yeah. He's yeah. pretty sound. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, I, I, I always love posing that question when authors have got, you know, that, that duo dynamic. And, and who is it? And, and often that difficulty is there because it's actually, you know, it's the fusion of the two. You yeah. Kind of have them both because they're actually, yeah. you know, okay. they, yeah, created together. And, but, but yeah, so Imogen for you. Now, I'm aware of the time and I, and I hate to, to close conversations when I'm starting to find out about people and their writing. But I've got, I've got two questions left. Okay. And, and, and one I probably should have asked at the beginning, but it's just the way it goes. That notion of the psychological thriller. Now, you, you told me when you started The Teacher, it, it was started as a romance. So I wonder at what point in your writing, and do, and do you even now identify as a psychological thriller author? And if you do, how does that feel? I don't think I do. Uh, I, I think I just write what I want to write. In fact, I probably couldn't even describe what a psych thriller is. Mm -hmm. And I was desperately trying to find out while I was writing Heatwave. Um, and the book I'm writing now, the next standalone, is probably definitely not a psych thriller. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I think I, I identify as a crime writer in yeah. a more general sense than as a like, subgenre, if mm -hmm. that makes yeah it does and, and 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 i think you know again from what what you say in the idea of who knows where creativity will take you yeah so not to put was, on the label because it was obvious from quite early on that romance was not going to be my thing <laughs> <laughs> just like killing people so. yeah, yeah, yeah just take the romance out of it and just get on yeah. and kill the people so yeah. my last question is about the facebook book group crime suspect that you run uh when when did it start and and how do you feel it's going what you know what what purpose do you feel it serves and, and are you happy with what it's doing 
Um, it's it's just a place for people to talk about crime books, really, and um, and crime TV shows and films we talk about as well. Um, I really like the group that we've got in there. They're nice, friendly people. It's been going about a year. We've, it's still quite a small group. There's about it's under a thousand members, but um, it's nice that people engage and chat and and um, and sometimes I'll poll them with questions that I might use in my books later on so um yeah and i started it because i wanted i like facebook groups but i don't always want to adhere to their rules so i mm -hmm. thought i'd make one with my own rules and that would make and, and i did it with a couple of other authors as well so it's uh james law and, and michael malone as well helped yeah. me to run it so yeah yeah i have a big soft spot for michael malone i think he's awesome one he's great a, guy yeah. yeah great books as well Oh yeah, yeah, be beautiful, be beautiful books. Um, so if anybody is watching, uh, wants to join, uh, that Facebook group, is, do, do people just just find it and join it and join and it? I'll put you in and don't break the rules, and I won't throw you out. <laughs> awesome, that is lovely. And again, uh, if people are wanting to get hold of, and I hope viewers, I hope you are wanting to get hold of a copy of the Heat Wave um in bookstores and online i think it's still in supermarkets as well yeah because it's only been out sort of eight weeks ish i think yeah. so uh yeah so that one's still around it's still um, around. and the formats that we can get it in uh audiobook uh digital ebook and paperback Brilliant, brilliant. Just because, you know, knowing that, that, that viewers and readers have their favourite way of, of, of enjoying uh, a good crime fiction story. So good to know that it's out there in all that format. Kat Diamond, what a beautiful way to actually get to meet you properly uh, by discussing a um, fabulous body of work there. Um, and... All the best with Heatwave, but even more so with those novels that are all in progress and, and waiting to come out. And when the time is right, I look forward to saying welcome to Newcastle to you when we can do it. Yeah, I really look forward to it. I can't all wait. Right. Right. Great to talk, Kat, and see you soon. Yeah, see you soon, Jackie. Bye. Bye.